Usually when I make Photoshop edits, I spend about three to four hours on making that look cool. My longest time editing so far was on the Star Wars assembly wallpaper, which took me about 11 hours to finish. Today, however, all of that changes. I get to spend 24 hours on making artwork and I get to make it as insane as I could possibly want. Now, weirdly enough, this is actually a massive challenge for me since usually I simply work very fast. That is not a flex, by the way. Over the years, I've made the way I use Photoshop my own and I've just become very time efficient in the process, I suppose. I very often struggle to spend more than four hours on something because the initial idea is just done at that point, I, I guess. Not today though, because today I'm gonna try and see what happens if I spend 24 fat hours on making some artwork. Let's just get into it. First off, I need a rough idea I can expand on as I go. And what's better than some badass science fiction soldiers exploring uncharted territory? The idea was one big alpha guy in the middle, plus two on each side, roaming over some kind of landscape that's yet to be determined. For now, the only thing that matters is those guys, and since I have all the time in the world, I can spend an eternity on making them look very badass. It seemed like an extra fun challenge to use myself as reference, so I have to add everything on top of that instead of using a fully clothed uh, soldier. I ended up with four photos and chose these two to start with. Of course, I first had to cut these out and for that I used the pen tool to get a super accurate selection. Because, well, I have the time and I think you're gonna hear me say that quite a lot during this video. So far with the shooting and masking, I had spent one hour. With these two ready, it's time to find some nice accessories and for that I have Envato elements. I went over to 3D elements and collected a ton of stuff. This grenade launcher would become the primary sort of weapon I'd modify later and in general I just just needed a buttload of sci-fi elements to make armor and body parts from. I am not keeping track of the time I spent searching for stock images and preparing stuff because that it's just really chaotic most of all. So at the end I'll make a rough estimate and see where that goes. I opened up Photoshop again and uh, let's get cooking. I was very excited to get the gun to look cool as heck so I tried fitting that into my arms. The proportions were a bit off but nothing I couldn't fix because guess what? I had plenty of time. Using other sci-fi parts I collected, I started adding on items to make it look more unique and custom. These chambers, I wanted to be little tubes filled with uh, some sort of green kind of goo, as if that's what fuels their rifles. This would become a theme throughout the whole artwork later. I can't believe how much effort I put into this one gun. And to be honest, it felt kind of refreshing to be able to work on something forever and not having to worry about some deadline or whatever. These are such tiny details in the end, and yet I really love doing stuff like this. a helmet with a cool bluish visor that shows some HUD elements and I wanted to have some armor on me as well so I'd be protected against whatever horrors this landscape brings. Once I added this robot arm, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if this is just a complete cyborg? What's funny is that this was supposed to be the main guy in the middle, but later end up as one of the secondary soldiers. This does mean I don't hold back at all on the details, which is definitely a good thing. This was looking pretty sick and I decided this was a good base to start off with. This one soldier took a total of three hours to put together, meaning we are now four hours in. The second guy was basically gonna have the exact same look with the outfit and accessories. I got some different angles from the items I found and well started doing the exact same thing over and over again. I gotta say doing that the second time was a lot less fun than the first because it's literally just copying pasting the same kind of stuff but I suppose it is good practice and it did end up looking pretty sick. All 
done, that's two hours and 15 minutes on top. Now this is where I realized I want a closer up version in the center. So I went back and shot another photo of myself, this time closer up. I cut out that photo again and had to edit this one again also the same sort of way. Not entirely though, as I thought since this is the leader, he should probably look a bit different and superior. My idea also was that the two on the sides would be cyborgs and the one in the middle would be an actual human being. Why, you may ask? No idea, just for some fun narrative. I guess. Overall, it's still pretty similar at the end, but just more bulky and the obvious change of no helmet. This one took forever, but I'm satisfied with the result. This has cost me three and a half hours. We are nine hours and 45 minutes in, not counting stock images. And all we have so far is a few soldiers. And that brings me to an interesting point. Usually I would just grab a fully clothed soldier from the internet and just put it in a new composition and that would then become the final artwork where now I get to make everything completely myself and it is refreshing. A lot, a very much big refreshing mo- what? Point is, it is very exciting, let's move on to the next step. It is time to start building a landscape and I decided to go with some sort of volcanic landscape with a twist. Something you don't see every day, like uh, palm trees. First the ground though, so I spent way too long finding good images to use. First I popped in the three guys I already had so I could decide where stuff would go. I started adding some of the landscape photos I found and tried assembling those in a consistent landscape that would fit my sub the best. This took a ton of masking and coloring to get right, but it did work at the end. I had to make sure they're all connected in a natural way, but luckily since these rocks are very dark gray, the coloring part wasn't really such a big problem at all. foreground complete, I'd add the second layer of landscape behind it. It's all pretty straightforward, really. I also used a few different sky images to make sure the whole entire background is covered up. And all things considered, that didn't look so bad. The blue tint I added here was an idea that I thought could make it look a bit more off-worldy, but I decided to add that later at the very end. With a plain landscape ready, it's time we go and spice it up. The water there was gonna be flowing lava, because, uh, that's cool as hell. I made it orange, then added some highlights to it to make it pop, and there you go. Instant lava. I tried making it look more realistic using some lighting around, and well, that looked pretty nice. Same goes for this lava pool on the right. With all that in place, I wanted to blend in the subjects at least a little bit, so I started working on that. This was a lot harder than I thought, both because of the lighting and the perspective. At the end though, I did make it work. I also brought back the blue light in the sky to see what that would look like, but I wasn't really sure yet. I really started worrying about the time though, and not because of the reason you think. This had cost me only two hours and 15 minutes. I had no idea how I was ever gonna fill this time, but I guess we'll just keep going. Going. This was the point to spice up the whole entire thing and add a buttload of filters, details, elements, since the landscape is pretty empty so far. I started with the right side. I put some debris on the ground and blended it in there. A little further down, I put some cargo crates. These would be sitting here for a long time after this place was abandoned. Or was it? Now, the trees. This turned my negative opinion so far around, because this made it look so much better in my opinion. It mostly added a ton of depth, making sure it's not a flat and plain backdrop. Getting the trees to look good took a second, mostly because of the light, but it ended up working pretty well. The ground looked pretty clean and plain in my opinion, so I spiced it up using a mossy texture. This helps a ton. So I decided to spread this all over the ground and the crates to make them look old and weathered. I also put some tree stumps down here as if something huge just burst it through this part of the forest. I don't know, could be fun. And with a fern or two, I thought, all right, that's that's a pretty nice way to fill this up. Two hours spent. My worrying continued though, as I was still only just over halfway there. I quite literally needed more space to work with, so that is what I... That's exactly what I did. I expanded the artwork back to a 16 to 9 ratio, adding more room on the top and bottom. This way, I had some more room on the ground to add more stuff. Only adjusting everything back to this new artboard was enough work as well though, since that took me another hour. Because all of the adjustment layers I added before were cut off by the old borders. Once that was complete, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if there are some soldiers in the back scouting in between the trees? Since they were going to be small anyway, I wasn't going to put as much effort into these. But they still had to look sort of 
of similar. I cut out these soldiers here and started adjusting color so they are black instead. I added the green tanks on their backs, thought it'd be nice if they had the same helmets as well, and even their weapons I replaced with the new ones. These guys would kind of be the human equivalent of the cyborgs next to me because of course cyborgs are a lot more expensive, so you know. At the end, I was actually very happy with the way they looked. It didn't take too long and yet they still look very similar. Time to drop them in the final artwork. I placed them in a nice order and added the same effects on them, putting them in the distance. This whole area is definitely my favorite part of the artwork. For some reason, this made it look super detailed and full. One and a half hours added and this is where we're at. In the very background, I also wanted to add some very tiny trees on the horizon. And of course, I also wanted some trees on the left side to make it consistent overall. That's another 30 minutes. For a cool background element that would add even more narrative to the whole thing, I put a giant spaceship right there, giving you the idea that this is uh, where the soldiers came from. Genius. They landed here for reason X, and now they're scouting the landscape, searching for something classified. From this point on, it's just more of the same. Adding some more trees, adding details, colors, lighting, you name it. There's always a ton of little things you can fix towards the end, and if you really get into it, there's a ton of time to spend here as well. Three hours later and everything seemed to be in place, meaning it's time for a camera raw filter. I wanted this thing to pop a lot, so I tried a bunch of things until I had something I was happy with. I mostly wanted a ton of clarity so all the details are properly visible. But now you must be wondering, Benny. There are still four hours left on the clock. Well, like I said earlier in this video, I haven't been accounting for stuff like preparing, looking for stock images, that sort of stuff. Even cutting out some elements off screen, I'm gonna say I probably spent four hours on that in total. And trust me, it is way more than that, but I just wanted to, you know, make this artwork look very good. Overall, that whole preparing stage is incredibly time consuming. I often lose track of time. But uh, anyway, that means the clock is more than maxed out. And that also means that this artwork is now finished. Looking back at this whole process, there are a few things I noticed. First of all, I definitely surprised myself on some areas and I, I just feel like I unlocked some sort of new level of editing somehow, if that makes sense. I never really add this much detail to stuff for various reasons, but now that I actually did, it shows. It is definitely a big difference. That said, next time I do something like this, I should probably think of a concept that has a bit more stuff to add, like literally just more things to add, more stuff to do. Because for this particular one, I'm already at the point where if I start adding more stuff, I feel like it's just gonna get messy and kind of chaotic. Which brings me back to the point I made in the beginning. At some point, the concept is just done and there's nothing really else to do. I guess. Now, there's one funny thing. This video actually was supposed to be called I spent a hundred hours on this one Photoshop edit, which um, is quite insane. And I tried that, but then like a few hours in, I realized that's never gonna happen with this idea. So I just decided, you know, let's make this a 24 hour project instead. But that idea was and maybe still could be on the table. I guess it all depends on how this video is gonna perform. For today though, I'm pretty sure that's it. If you like this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell down below so you don't miss a single video. And then I hope I'll see you in my next video.